pray for blessings, we pray for peace, comfort for family, protection while we sleep. We pray for healing, for prosperity. We pray for your mighty hand to ease our suffering. And all the while, you hear each spoken need. And yet you love us way too much to give us lesser things. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? We pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. And we cry in anger when we cannot feel you near. We doubt your goodness, we doubt your love. As if every promise from your word is not enough. And all the while, you hear each desperate plea. And long we'd have faith to believe. Cause what if your blessings come through raindrops? What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? When friends betray us, What if your healing comes through tears? What if a thousand sleepless nights are what it takes to know you're near? What if my greatest disappointments or the aching of this life is a revealing of a greater thirst this world can't satisfy? trials of this life, the rain, the storms, the hardest nights, are your mercies in disguise. Good evening. That was Elena Campbell singing Blessings. Elena is only nine years old, and she is one of the, um, the Lord is raising her up to be a mighty worshiper for him. She's part of Brushstroke Ministries. Um, she's like worshiper in training. And um, she's also, well, I call her my niece. Uh, she's, I'm Aunt Jenny to her, and she is as much mine as mine could ever be. Um, I just appreciate the, her willingness to come and serve the Lord in this way and to worship Him. She has a worshiper's heart.
I remember when she was maybe three or four, we were rehearsing at my house for a, a CD we were doing, a worship CD, and we were singing this really powerful song, and she went, after it was over, she went to her mom, who was sitting there with us, and she said, my stomach hurts, my stomach feels funny. She couldn't identify it at three, or f maybe three or four, but it was the Holy Spirit in her stirring because of the music. And we knew then that there was a special call on her life, and we're trying to nurture that call. I hope to bring her back in a couple weeks to do something else. I think we might do something together. Anyway, that was Elena Campbell, and I just appreciate her so much. Um, I hope you just appreciated that song, too. Well, if you're tuning in looking for Greenbrier, once again, he is not here. He's not going to be here for the next four weeks, including uh, five weeks, including tonight. He's asked me to step in for him and do some Bible teaching and some sharing with you. I know it's tender, loving care, and so I'm trying to do um, some devotions or some sharing with you about the way we take care of ourselves. I'm going to be um, teaching again out of my book called In Moments Like These. It's a devotional I wrote a couple of years ago. Um, and it's talking about different moments of our lives, moments of stress or moments of burdens of trials or joy or needing strength or despair. Each of those moments is in, is in the book. Um, I will also have four more coming out in, by May. We have a four book deal that we're working on right now and we're going to be giving, uh, be bringing to you four more in moments like these with over 200 devotions that can be used all year round. Different moments of anger or abandonment or praise or sorrow or grief. Um, joy. All of those will be um, in the book that you can just go through the page and find the one that you need and be able to share it and to be able to be um, ministered to by it. So I'll, I'll give you more information as the time gets closer. But if you wouldn't mind praying for that whole process for the books to, to really just uh, do what we want them to do and to be able to minister to hearts and to share the word, the life-giving word of God to people in need. We're very excited about that. Very excited about that. So today I'm going to do a Bible study with you or a devotion out of my book called Portrait of a Camel. I know, I have a friend who says I come up with the best titles, and they're really just inspired by God. I'll be sitting in my at my desk, and I'll be just meditating and praying to the Lord, and, and I'll hear a title or a word, and then he leads me through these very beautiful uh, tangents in the word. Um, and today... Uh, or when I did this, it was Portrait of a Camel, and I really knew exactly what he was going to show me when I heard that word camel in my mind. So let me read you the verse I'm going to use today. It's Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 through 30, and it says this, Come to me, all who are very weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Egyptian monuments show um, a yoke on an ox way back, consisted of a straight bar that was actually fastened to their forehead with um, straps or bonds that would go around, and that's how you um, directed the ox or um, a bull or a cow, or whatever you use, or a, or a horse, or a mule. But later, they showed um, a picture of a different kind of yoke. And this is actually the kind of yoke that was used in Israel, and that's what I think Jesus is referring to when he talks about this. And it's a yoke that goes across the shoulders with straps that come down and are bound underneath the arms and the neck of the animal, or the legs and the neck of the animal. And it's that yoke that 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 directs them and guides them. Well, these bonds that are fastened and this yoke that is on them is burdensome. It is it they just they're carrying the weight of the plow or of a chariot or some other mode of of movement and transportation. And it was a great picture of how we feel sometimes when we have yokes of bondage on us. They could be yokes of grief or shame, could be yokes of sadness and despair. It could be a yoke of worry, trials and troubles. 
we carry a lot of burdens. And it's something that the Lord doesn't want us to carry because it can do crazy things to our bodies. I had an instance over the summer where I was just burdened by something, and it, it, it just kind of weighed on me so heavy that I, it ended up giving me a shortness of breath and chest pains. It was all because of this yoke and this burden that I was carrying. And I was reminded that I wasn't supposed to carry this burden. I was reminded that I was supposed to lay these burdens down and give them to Jesus because he says, his yoke, my yoke is easy. Your burden, our burdens that we carry are so um, strong and, and hard to carry, but his are light. And so when I thought about this camel, it wasn't, well, let me do it this way. Webster's Dictionary says that camels are the most common beasts of burden that there are. If we want to know how to carry a burden, doesn't it make sense we go to the great burden bearers and the carriers of the burdens to see how they do it? Well, when I got that in my mind and I began to just kind of think about it, I got the picture in my head of this camel with all of these bags and uh, burdens on them, those, the, you know, the carrying of the luggage or carrying of gold and silver draped over them or carrying people. And I thought, we, that's what we look like. We carry those burdens like a camel does, right on the hunch of the back. So it wasn't so much that what the camel was carrying as God reminded me how the camel lays down his burden. It's not easy. It's not easy. It is not easy to lay down our burdens. We want to hold on to them. We think that we can control them better when we hold on to them. We think that we can manage them if we hold on to them. We think that if we let them go, that they're out of our control and we wouldn't be able to, to uh, deal with them appropriately and rightly. But that's not at all what God is requiring and desiring for us. He wants us to be burdened free from the yokes that bind us or bound us down. There are burdens that he puts on us that are good burdens, burdens of prayer for somebody. That's a great burden to carry, the kind of burden that sends you to your knees when you want to pray for somebody because God has put that burden on you, um, a burden of responsibility in a calling or in ministry or for lost souls. Those are great burdens burdens. They're the ones that God puts on you, but his burden is light. It's not the kind that drives you and holds you down. It's not like a chain that, that, that just keeps you bound up like that. His burdens are the kind that he places on you, and then he lifts them off of you when you're relieved of that, when you have fulfilled what you needed to do. But let me talk to you about how the camel deals with his burden. When a camel begins the task of laying off his burden, the first thing he does, and you see this picture in your head, is he kneels down. But look at how the camel has to kneel. It is such a struggle. It's not an easy just drop down to your knees. It is a struggle to just, oh, to get down on one knee. You can just see it trying to buckle that huge weight on these little skinny legs, trying to control it and to kneel down. One knee, and and then the, the other knee, and he's halfway down, and it was such a struggle to get there. And then the back legs go down, and the other back leg, and you can see him wobble because it is so hard just to kneel down. You know, that really spoke to me when God showed me that. Because there are times that it, it sounds so funny, but it really is hard to pray. It really is hard to drop to our knees and pray. Whether it be pride or fear that keeps us from falling to our knees. But that's the first picture of relieving ourselves of this burden. Is to fall to our knees. To drop to our knees with such passion and such desire to get rid of that burden. I mean, that camel, once he starts the process, doesn't decide halfway down and say, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to kneel down and drop my burden. Once he starts down, there is no stopping him. And he continues on down until both knees are down. And then the back knees go down. And there he is on his knees. What a beautiful, beautiful picture of prayer for us. 
that God wants us when we're carrying those burdens to fall before the throne of grace, dropping ourselves to our knees, throwing ourselves at the foot of the cross and saying, God, I need help. Father, I can't do this on my own. Savior God, help me. Well, you know, it's what he does. It may take all the strength we have just to fall to our knees. It's not a weakness. It's a strength. It is not a weakness. It's a strength to be able to fall before the Lord. We may buckle under the weight of sin. We may buckle under the weight of trial and pain. But when we fall to our knees, that's where the healing begins. Psalm 30 verse 2 says this. O oh Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you healed me. You heard me. When we cry out from that place, he heals us. He hears us, and he helps us. Now, once the camel is down, this is the crazy part of this whole camel picture. Once he's on his knees, here's what he does. He rolls over, lays down. And what does the burden do? It's not taken off of him. It's not lifted off of him. It's not wrangled off of him. When the camel lays on his side and leans over, the burden, you got it, rolls off. The burden just falls off of him, rolls off of him. It is not taken off of him. It merely falls to the ground. Amen. When we get to that place that we are on our knees and we lay ourselves out before the Lord, then it, the burden just rolls off of us. There have been more than a handful of times when I have been in my place of my in my house that I call my altar. It's just a chair and it's in my living room. But there have been more than a handful of times where I have had to go to my knees at that altar and then lay myself, physically lay myself down on my living room floor and roll over and say, God, please take this burden off of me. Please let it roll off. I can't carry it anymore. That was one of the hardest lessons to learn for me is that I had to just let it roll off. What a powerful, powerful truth. Once we pray, those weights of oppression just roll off of us, on to Jesus. But it doesn't end there. Because if you really think about what happens, the camel just gets right back up. And not even remembering what he just laid down. He doesn't get up, here, listen, he doesn't get up and turn around and look at the things that just dropped off of him. He doesn't stand back up and go about 20 feet and turn around and say, oh, there are the burdens I lay down. I think I'll take them back up again. He doesn't stand back up and um, look around them and sniff around them. He doesn't do any of that. When a camel gets up, after laying down his burden, he just simply goes on. He doesn't turn around. He doesn't remember. He doesn't meditate on what he just dropped. He just gets up and he goes again waiting for another burden to be put upon him, only to once again fall down on his knees, lay down, roll over, and let the burden roll off of him and fall off of him. And then he gets back up and goes again. That is a powerful picture. Because we might be really good at laying down those burdens. We might be really good at letting them roll off of us. But I know, I know because I do it. I know that there are times where we look at them and we think, oh, nope, I need to carry that. And you pick it back up and you heave it back on your shoulders and the weight of that thing comes on you again. And then God sends you back to your knees only for you to drop it off again and let it roll off of you. And then you go maybe a day or two or a week or a month or a year and then all of a sudden you're reminded of that burden. And so once again, you go back to where you dropped it off and you try to pick it back up again and put it on you. That's not what the camel does. He lets it roll off of him. He lets it fall off of him. He gets up 
and he moves on. He walks away, not just from the burden, but from the place that he laid it down. Psalm 145, verse 14 says this, The Lord sustains all that fall and raises up those who are bowed down. Let me say it one more time. The Lord sustains sustains all who fall before him. He sustains all who drop to their knees. He sustains all who are so heavily laden with burdens and they fall and they stumble. The word says he sustains them, they that fall, and then raises up those who are bowed down. He raises up. The promise is, though a man falls seven times, the Lord will raise him up every single time. Every time we fall down with a burden and we roll it over and let we roll over and let it fall off of us, he promises that he will raise us up, those that are bowed down. That's a great promise. That means I can get up again. I can get up free and full of liberty and full of peace and and full of strength that I forgot that I'd had because the burden had taken so much of me. That's the power of the portrait of a camel. Not so much the way he carries the burden, but the way that he lets the burden roll off of him. Now I know that there are many of you that are just overwhelmed with life job loss, death, grieving, and despair, trials with children, um, broken relationships. I know. I know because we have been in, I have been in the midst of a battle for months. And this is a reminder of what God wants from us, that he doesn't want us to carry that burden. He wants us to lay it down. And I'm here to tell you, I'm here to beseech you and to ask you to lay that burden down for him He doesn't want you to carry it. He wants you to be beautiful and healthy and strong. Let me read that verse out of Matthew one more time just to remind you about what he's trying to say. Listen, come to me. That's the first thing. Come to me, he says. You need to get to that place where you can come to him. And he says, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn from me, he says, for I am gentle and lowly of heart, and you will find rest. You will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Wouldn't you rather carry his burden, the lightness of his burden, than the heaviness of yours? And like I said earlier, he wants you to carry some burdens, Burdens of prayer, burdens for the lost, burdens for a loved one, but not to weigh you down, but a burden that will allow you to go to the throne on their behalf, a burden that will keep you focused on on them in the Lord, not trying to handle it yourself, but giving it up to the Lord. Those are the kind of burdens that he wants. I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray that those of you who need to just fall before the throne, will not hesitate, that even even at this moment, that you will fall to your knees, go to a place and drop to your knees and say, God, I cannot carry this burden anymore. I have to let it go. Because I want you to be able to rise up in victory and in triumph. Because we are more than conquerors in Christ. And those burdens, remember, can do crazy things to your body. They can make you feel depressed. They can rob you of your sleep. They can keep you from um, going through life and doing what you what you want to do. They keep you from successfully and victoriously dealing with the problem. And it's not what he wants. He wants peace, strength, might, health, beauty, and power. And that is why we need to be like a camel. Amen? Amen. I want to remind you about the book. You can go to brushstrokeministries.com if you'd like to, if you're interested in the book. Um, We're not taking orders yet for the new books. They won't be out until May, uh, the 1st of May. Um, 
if you'll just keep praying for us as we go through that process, we'd really appreciate it because there's a, so much to do in getting the book, the manuscripts ready and to get them to the um, to the publisher and for them to edit them and, and do them. They're going to be beautiful hardback gift books um, that we're going to put out. I'm so excited because I want people to just have a refuge that they can run to that's full of the word and full of his presence and full of his anointing that they can read something and be changed and be moved. Also want to remind you that um, we are I'm part of something called Breath of God Ministries, which is a worship service that we do using the Way of Holiness Auxiliary Gym. It's not associated with, with Way of Holiness. We just They just graciously allow us to use the gym. Um, 8 o'clock Sunday mornings. If you, are, if you do not have a home church, we welcome you. If you have a home church and you just want a little extra push on a Sunday morning, come and join us. It's an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes. We have worship. We do prayer. We have preaching of the word. We can lay hands on. We can do amazing things in that service, in, in what God has given us. Um, if you're interested, 8 o'clock, Breath of God Ministries Worship at the Way of Holiness Church. Check out Brushstroke Ministries on the web at brushstrokeministries.com. And there is a link that you can contact us if you have a prayer request. Please let us know. We love to pray. And I have a, um, a warring um, group of women and men who pray for the needs that come through the ministry. So if you have a need, please let us know. We'd love to pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Be a camel this week. Be a camel. Amen. Amen.